have a deadly nightshade, so twisted does it grow, with berries black as midnight and skull as white as snow. Hi folks, we are in a friend of mine's garden today to talk about poison plants. So we're going to talk about some of our nightshades, our native British plants, and I'll show you around the garden and we'll go through some of the different ones we can find. So first off, we've got our monk's hood. So this is uh, Aconitum napellum. Now, this is often confused with um, wolfsbane, and you'll oft often see the two names kind of uh, get mixed up with different plants. Now, wolfsbane is in the same family of plants, but it's the fla smaller flowers, and the flowers are yellow, and it's much, much more poisonous, although this is very, very poisonous in itself. Now, the monk's hood name comes because you can see they've got this like hooded lip on them so it looks like a monk's hood and you'll find these in cottage gardens and in um, sort of stately homes and things like that the leaves if you look at them uh, they look very, very similar to the leaves you would find on something like um, buttercups, and that's because they're from the same family of plants, the ranunculi family. And this, although this plant is incredibly poisonous, um, we do use it in herbal medicine, and it's used to treat neuralgia, neuralgic pain, and often used as well um, to treat uh, coughs and colds. Now, um, there's lots of other herbs to treat coughs and colds, so I think that probably you would use this in coughs and colds or fevers that are really sticky and really hard to get rid of, you know, when you've used everything else. Now, the stories go that um, people used to dip arrows into the monk's hood and the wolf's bane um, to use for hunting. Um, now, you're not going to hurt yourself by touching the plant or anything like that, but obviously if you do grow it, the roots in particular are very, very poisonous, so make sure you use gloves. I'm going to take you down in a minute and I'll show you our belladonna. So this is a tropos belladonna and she is huge. Um, and this plant is um, not very common, actually, in this part of the country. It tends to only grow in Britain in the southern parts of the country, so down Cornwall, Devon, that sort of place. And a lot of people tend to get it mixed up with other nightshades, like woody nightshade or black nightshades. And if I can find some, I will show you those. But one of the ways to tell them apart is Belladonna has got these bell-shaped flowers... And as you can see, is absolutely massive, whereas things like black nightshade and woody nightshade are much smaller. Woody nightshade is also a climbing plant. This, when it gets the berries on it, they are round and they're really, really black and shiny and they have a star-shaped calyx behind them. Now, this plant is named after Atropos, um, the Greek fate, the cutter of cords. And obviously very poisonous, but it has been used in herbal medicine for years. And um, people used to put this in eye drops to dilate the pupils. And the name Belladonna actually comes from the words beautiful lady, because ladies would use these eye drops to make them look more appealing, apparently. Um, now, magically, any of these herbs, um, they're known as the hexing herbs, so our baneful herbs, um, so used in our hexing magic, but belladonna, I find, is really good for um, cutting toxic relationships or cutting cords with things that you don't need anymore, so toxic habits and things like that. So it's a really plant, a good plant to get to know. Wow. 
We do use belladonna in herbal medicine as well and it's used quite often for um, pain, uh, particularly um, pain caused by things like endometriosis. Um, however, you do have to be a registered herbalist to be able to, to do that and to prescribe that. Um, so it's not something that you can just go and buy a tincture of um, in a normal shop. So this folks is our black nightshade. So this one has white flowers and clusters of berries. So again, this is one that tends to get mistaken for belladonna quite a lot on the internet, but belladonna has the single berries and we've got, I'm gonna go and show you the single berries in a second. It's got white flowers. So these look very much like potato flowers and again, cause they're in the same family. And these um, berries do go black, but they're more of a dull black rather than a shiny black. So we'll go and have a look, another look at the belladonna in a second. Um, so this one in, her, in herbal medicine is used for stomach cramps and nausea. Um, now this is the least poisonous out of all the ones we've looked at. And in Europe, uh, apparently they do steam the leaves and eat them like spinach, but I'm not going to recommend that you do that. Um, but apparently in some places in Europe they do. So let's go and have another look at the belladonna. So this is a good few months after we started filming now. So the berries are out. So look at that, that's a belladonna berry. Absolutely unmistakable once you've seen it. That star shaped calyx behind it. Bright black, really shiny, really round. Looks like a big eyeball. You cannot mistake it. And all these um, nightshades are closely linked with our um, some of our goddesses like Hecate, usually linked to um, the crone element of the goddess, and also they're under the planet of Saturn in astrology. So Saturn's all about slowing things down and tying things up. So this is why they're used in our like in our binding magic and things like that. So um, so that's our some of our nightshades. Okay, so we're out and about now um, to show you some other nightshades. So the first one we're going to have a look at is this one. This is woody nightshade, or common name is bittersweet. Now, I quite often on the internet see this labelled as uh, belladonna, as, which it's not. Um, and there's a couple of key differences. So the first one is the flowers. So with belladonna, obviously we had those bell-shaped flowers, whereas with uh, bittersweet um, or woody nightshade, we've got these star-shaped flowers. Now, those of you that are gardeners will notice that these are very, very similar to tomato flowers, um, obviously a different colour. Um, and that's because these are the same family. So they're all nightshades, tomatoes are nightshades, and other things that we're used to eating, like potatoes and aubergines, are all part of the nightshade family. So that's why. Um, this is a climbing plant. So belladonna, if you remember, was quite upright. This is a climbing plant. You'll normally find it climbing in bushes and hedgerows. And then we've got the, um, the fruit. So I'll move around in a minute and show you the fruit. So these kind of look a bit tomato, don't they? Um, so these fruits uh, uh, are more sort of oval shaped, whereas if you remember with the belladonna, the belladonna was really round. Um, and these are not, these don't go black. So remember belladonna had those really black shiny berries. These ones go various shades between green, orange and red. Okay, so that's, those are some of the key differences. So this one is, it is poisonous, but it's not deadly poisonous, but I still wouldn't chance a nibble on it. Um, it's used in, uh, in protective magic quite a lot, so um, people would weave these into charms and put them on doors, uh, especially cattle doors, to keep away uh, the evil eye and to keep away evil witches from uh, cursing their cattle. And in medicinal uses, it is used in medicinal herbalism, 
um, for to treat skin conditions, so acne, eczema, uh, and other skin conditions as well. So that is our woody nightshade, our bittersweet. So I'm just going to quickly show you this one. This is what's called Enchanter's Nightshade. Now this isn't actually a nightshade at all. Um, but it grows, the reason it's called that is because it grows alongside um, pathways. So, and apparently it grow, glows, glows in the dark slightly. So people used to believe that it was put there uh, by the fairies to show the way home. So that's your Enchanter's Nightshade. Hi folks, so we're back uh, at home now in front of my rather extensive bookcase. Um, so I'm going to recommend a couple of books to you um, on poison plants uh, just to finish off. Um, there's loads out there, there's loads of different plants you can find, uh, books you can find out there on poison plants. Um, so definitely have a little search. I can put some more links in the comments as well if you if any of you are interested. But there's two uh, I'm going to talk about today. So let me just grab the first one. So this one is called Poison Prescriptions. It's by the Seed Sisters. Um, it's a really fabulous book with some really good illustrations in it. And it talks all about the history, the folklore of uh, our native poison plants, as well as some ways to use them as well. And then the other one that I'm going to talk about is this one. So this is the Poison Herbal by Kobe Michael. Kobe is really, really knowledgeable um, and also has a fantastic website. He does talks. He's got a Patreon where he will share recipes and other stuff. So really, really knowledgeable, really worth checking out his, uh, his website and his social media. Um, so these are books that you can have a read of to learn a little bit more about poison plants if you want to. There's others out there as well. I'll drop some links in the comments and if you're interested as well, uh, just pop me a message. I hope you enjoyed today and I'll see you on the next one.